Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Joe. Inventories are all about items, holding them, interacting with them, throwing them, getting items information, anything has to do with items. Today I would like to share with you how to build an inventory including building a UI and a scriptable object for player inventory using Unity UI systems and C Sharp script from A to Z. First, I need to create one simple UI canvas to establish one inventory UI menu and each item slot. Then, I will switch the inventory menu by pressing escape button, complete the player movement script and allows player to pick up items. The third step is I'm going to use scriptable objects to save the item's assets and finish add item functions in our project. This is the first part of the inventory series. The link for the project repository is on the description below. So feel free and go ahead and check out for yourselves. Now let's get into the video. First of all, we create a new 2D project in Unity. We will create several main folders, animations, prefabs, and scripts. We are going to use some free images and fronts for this project. I have put these folders on the description below. In order to change the background color applied there to the screen, we can select solid color and choose to the black color. Right click anywhere in the hierarchy, go UI and select canvas. Set UI scale mode to scale with screen size, which allow you to specify a resolution to use as references. The reference resolution we set 1920 plus 1080. Create one UI image. Press anchor preset button in the upper left corner. We can anchor the UI image element stretched together with the parent size by holding Alt and Shift. Then replace the source image. As you can see, my UI image looks weird. We select the sprite called Cardboard and go to the sprite editor. And we can see a version of the image with four green anchor around four size. We create a border to indicate that we want the top and bottom parts to be tiles horizontally and the left and right parts to be tiles vertically. Actually, you can skip this step and just drag the sprites inside source image. I just provide another way how to use four green anchors to modify your sprite. Rename this UI image and change its size. Under this UI image, create one UI panel and change its size. Then set the alpha channel to zero. Add grid layout group component, which place its child layout elements in a grid. Create one UI image under this panel. The default cell size to use for each layout element in the group is 100 plus 100. There are 21 slots in this game. In this case, we want to have 3 rows and 4 columns. This cell size is pretty small. Let's change to 200s plus 200s. Replace the source image. Change the color. Under the first slot, Press Anchor Preset button in the upper left corner. We can anchor the UI image element stretched together with the parent size by holding Alt and Shift. Then scale it down a bit. This is our item image. Drag the alpha channel to zero. Later we will make it visible by C Sharp script. Then create one UI text and press Anchor Preset button. We can anchor the UI text to the bottom right corner. Change several text properties. This UI text will display how many items we have in this slot. Create another UI image and then replace the source image. This UI image located on the upper left corner. Once we press this close button, we will throw this current item. Cool. Now we have completed our first slot game object.
dragged as a prefab. Later, we can easily make board changes across our whole project without having to repeatedly make the same edit to every copy of the assets. Select the slot game object and press Command or Ctrl D on my keyboard to duplicate our slot. There are 21 slots in this game. For this to work, we can drag the spacing X and Y in Gray Layout Group component to adjust the spacing between the layout elements. Then, simply create one UI text as the title. Select the first slot game object and disable the context and close button image. Then, press the Apply All button. All of slot game objects will change together. Create one C-sharp script called UI Manager. We have one game object variable that is called Inventory Menu. When we just launch our scenes, we have to deactivate our Inventory Menu game object. So we can say Inventory Menu dot game object dot set active, and we pass force into this method. We create one private function called inventory control and call this function inside update methods. Once we press the escape button, if the game is paused or stopped, we will resume our game. Otherwise, if the game is playing, once we press the escape button, we have to stop our game. So we have to create one boolean variable to keep track down whether our game is paused or not. Actually, we can create this boolean variable inside UI Manager. However, I choose to put this inside Game Manager script because Game Manager script handles the different game states. Our UI Manager should only focus on the UI stuff. Go to Game Manager script. First, we use Singleton pattern so that this Game Manager script will not destroy unloading different things, as always exists at any point in time. The Singleton pattern is a way to ensure Game Manager script has only one single global accessible instance available at all times. Then we have private boolean variable that is called is post. If UI Manager class needs some methods or variables from Game Manager, we can get the references to it with a simple call like this: Game Manager dot instance dot is post instead of find object of type Game Manager dot is post. Once our game is paused, we want to resume the game. Otherwise, if our game is running, when we press the escape button, we have to stop the game. Inside the resume functions, we have to deactivate inventory menu game object so we can say set active to be false. When time dot time scale is 1, time passes as fast as real time. When time dot time scale is set to 0, the game is basically paused. When we resume the game, the boolean variable is paused is set to be false. Go back into Unity, create an empty game object and call it UI Manager. Move to the inspector and reset the transform by clicking the gear icon on the transform component and selecting Reset. Finally, I will add a component and search for UI Manager. Drag the entire inventory group into the empty slot. We also need an empty game object called Game Manager, which holds the script Game Manager that will take care of everything. We can run our thing and look at the game view. Nice! We can open and close our inventory now. In this project, we need to control our player to pick up different items. We have to create one 2D player. We have completed player sprite settings such as pixel per unit, fleet mode and max size. Select all of player sprites and drag all of them into the hierarchy. Here is our player idle animation. Resize the player game object. Since we all use the rigid body dot velocity in C# script, we add one rigid body 2D component for our player. The body type we select kinematic. 
Also, we add one box collider 2D component to handle physical collections for our player. If we enter the play mode, we can see that our player can make idle animation. Additional, we can open and close the inventory menu as well. Create one C-sharp script called player movement. Inside player movement script, we need to first get the rigid body 2D component. We have one private flow variable called move speed. This variable controls how fast the player moves. We are capturing input from the input systems into two float variables called move edge and move v. Next, we will multiply it by the float variable move speed, which we can control from the inspector. We use reachable2d.velocity quite often. We just set in the velocities equals to the new vector 2, move edge, move v. Attached to our player game object is this player movement script. Then, set the move speed to 5, and run our scene. This time, we can control our player by keyboard. Once the inventory menu is open, which means our game is paused, we are not allowed it to move the player anymore. If we resume our game, we are able to continue to play the game. Cool. Let's drag the first item sprite into the hierarchy. Rename it, then change its size. Give it one circle collider 2D component, making sure you have checked its trigger because later we will use untrigger enter 2D function in C -sharp script. Create one new C -sharp script called pickup item and drag this script to our item game object. Inside untrigger enter 2D function, once the player tag object enters a trigger collider attached to this item, we want not only instantiate one pickup visual effect, also destroy our item game object. We declare one public game object type variable called pickup effect. I have set up the impact sprite. Sprite mode is multiple mode and slice by cell count. Select all of sprites and drag them into the hierarchy to make the animation. Select this animation and uncheck the for loop button. However, if we enter the play mode, the pickup effect do not disappear in this things. So go to animation window, press the record button, drag the timeline to the last next frame and set the sprite to no. Rename this game object as pickup effect and drag it as a prefab. Delete this game object first. Select the item game object and drag the pickup effect on here. Create one C-sharp script called destroy. This function allows the game object to be destroyed after several seconds, making sure there is no unnecessary game objects in the hierarchy during gameplay. Select our pickup effect prefab and add this script. Set the timer to 0.5. But our player cannot instantiate the pickup visual effect and there is no error on console window. Why? The reason is that we use gameobject.tag to detect which object entered a trigger collider attached to this item. However, Unity doesn't know this game object has the player tag. So let's select the player game object and give it one player tag. Create a new folder called items and drag our item book as a prefab. Let's create three items. Press Command or Control D on keyboard to duplicate the item book. Change its positions and its source image. If you feel this sprite size is a little big, resize it just making sure you have also resized the collider size. Drag this object into items folder and press the original prefab so that this new prefab will not override the previous one. Then make the third item again.
Now we have created three items. Create one C sharp script called item. This class will be used as a container for all items that display in this game. Inside this class, start by deriving from script to object instead of mono behavior. This action tells Unity that we will no longer need to put this script onto a game object. Script to objects are data container. They can be saved as assets in project. We can use the create assets menu attribute to make it easy to create custom assets using your class. The first public is one string type variable that is called item name. This string variable will hold the name of the item. Then we create another string type called item description, which represents the description of the item. Create one public sprite to hold the sprite of the item. Finally, create one integer type variable to hold the price of the item. Create a new folder called item data. We are able to right click within the project window and see your item assets there. Alternatively, you should be able to go to assets, create and see your items on the menu. It should be located in the first grouping above the folder assets. Click on the first item assets in the cars folder and take a look at the inspector window. Here, you will see an assets to store information about this particular item. Fill in the information for your first item. Then, we can use the send steps to make another two item assets. Try to give them unique item names, descriptions, and price. Be sure to use a property sprite located under items folder for the item sprite. As I mentioned, Game Manager is something that keeps track of what state the game is in. Manages the inventory systems. So, how can we store the collection of items? At the beginning, someone might say use array. The size of the array is fixed, but we don't know how many items the player will have during gameplay. To solve this problem, we can make use of list class, which is in the systems.collections.generic namespace. Now, to create a list of items, we write list followed by the type item inside anchor brackets. We then, of course, have the variable identifier. In other words, its name. And we can initialize this to a new empty list. We have the new keyword followed by list type of item, and then a pair of parentheses to call the constructor of the list class. Then we create another list to store the collection of the item number. These two lists were corresponding with each other. For example, if we have one item poison and its index in items list is 2, we can easily get access how many poison we have by using item number 2. If we have one item bulk and its index in items list is 5, we can use item numbers 5 to get its count as well. There are 21 slots in this game and its number is fixed. To declare an array, specify game object type with square brackets. Actually, in this project, we can use dictionary. A dictionary is similar to a list. However, instead of accessing a certain element by index value, we index a dictionary using a key value. A dictionary is a set of key value pairs. Create one private function called display items and call these functions inside star methods. For loop all of items we have. The next step, we want to integrate each item information with the UI from slot game object. We want to display what kind of items on this slot. Remember, we have set the item image alpha channel to zero before. So in C sharp script, we had to not only reset the alpha channel, but replace with the item image. We use transform.getChildMethods to return a transform child by index. Then, get the component of type image and get access of its color property. 
this group is equal to a new color. This new color alpha channel is 1. We can use the same methods to get its sprite property and replace with the item sprite. As I mentioned in my previous episodes, if we use transform.getChild methods, we cannot modify the order under this slot game object because once we do that, the index will mess up. So be careful when you use it. Then we can use the same step to get our context game object by using transform.getChild1. Then get the component of type text and get its color property. Also, this group is equal to a new color. The alpha channel is 1. However, we deactivated the context game object before, and all of context game objects from the slots has been deactivated. We can simply enable the context game object and press the apply all button. Cool. Each context game object has been changed. Drag the alpha channel to 0 and press again. Then we can get the component of type text and get its text properties is equal to item numbers i dot to string. Two string methods can convert integer type into a string type. Finally, once there is one existing item in this slot, we want to display the close button in each slot. We can easily get access of the close button game object by using transform.getChild methods. Save the script and switch bank. Go to Game Manager script. First, click the local icon. At the beginning of the game, there are only two items we have, so the item list count is 2. The item number list count is 2 as well. We can simply drag our item assets into the list elements. In this case, we have two box and six beers at the beginning of the game. Select all of slots game objects in the hierarchy. Drag them into slots array on inspector. We can run our thing and look at the game view. Now there are two box and six beers located in our inventory menu. We can change the item's number value and try again. This time we have three box and eight beers. Nice. Now it's time to add a new item to our list. Since we don't know what kind of items our player will pick up, this method we take one item parameter called underscore item. There are two situations we have to consider. First, if this new item we are going to add is one existing item we have in the inventory, what should we do? The second situation is that if this item we are going to add is a new item in the inventory, what should we do? We use list.contains to determine whether an element is in the list or not. This method returns one boolean variable. If the underscore item is not an element in the item's list, which means underscore item is a new item in inventory menu, we can add this new item to the end of the list using list.add methods and pass in the underscore item. Additional, we can add integer value 1 to the end of the list item numbers. In else statements, we can put debug.law to tell the player we already have this item now. In other words, the underscore item is not a new one in inventory menu. Please ignore the inquiry comments inside these if statements. The correct comment should look like this. We can press the keyboard M to test our add item function. We have to create one item variable. Later, we'll remove this update function and this item variable. Drag the item poison to this empty slot. Then press play. When we press the keyboard M, there is a new item register inside item list element 2 
and its item number element two's value is one. We can drag another item to this list. This time we drag the item beer, and this item we have already have in items list. When we press play, the console window tells player we already have one beer. Cool. Back to Visual Studio. Inside AL statements, if we already have this underscore item, for loop all of items we have, if one of items is equal to this underscore item, we can access the certain elements from list item number, then increase by one. As I mentioned before, the items and item numbers are corresponding with each other. So items two will correspond with the items number two count value. If we enter the play mode, we can see that once we press the keyboard M, the integer value will increase by one because each time we add one more beer in item list. So the item's number increased by one. This time, let's drag the item poison because this item is a new item for our inventory menu. If we enter the play mode and press the keyboard, we register a new item to the items list and the item number value is 1. If we press the keyboard M again, the item number value will plus 1, because at this point, we already have the item poison now. Nice. However, we don't want to only see the result from inspector, so we can go back to Visual Studio and call display items function inside add item methods. If you go back into Unity and run our scene, we can see that we have completed the add item function. Nice. Now it's time to remove one item from our list. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, part 2, we will finish this project and complete the remove item function, add more items in this game, create one tooltip for this project, and fix some errors during gameplay. Hopefully you can see a way that will be helpful for you in your project. As always, you can download the project from the description below. By the way, you can join our server on Discord. If you like this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, turn on the post notifications, and subscribe to my channel. There's much more to come. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.